What is going on, you guys? Welcome back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, we like never do sit down QA video vibe. I know we anymore. back. No, I'm saying like we never do it because we have our podcast. Oh, how do we start this video? Good morning. Good night. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Can't do this intro. We're gonna do a QA for y'all. We uh asked y'all on Instagram and we're just gonna do a QA. Josh is getting ready for a gender reveal that we're going to today. I'm joking. He's not he's just in this pink and blue spirit. On that note, y'all thinking about baby number three. I guess it's me, because you've been ready for baby number three. I've been thinking. I've been thinking. I'm not necessarily I've been, been ready, thinking. but I've oh. been thinking. Because I can I can envision. I can now say that I, I definitely I, I want another kid now. I'm ready. Why? What do you mean? I, something has just shifted in me. That's cool. Yeah, I was gonna say, shouldn't you be happy? I am, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> would you want another one or are you good with two? No, I'm not good with two. I, well, I, okay, for, no, for a minute you would. I could be good with two. Okay. Like I love our girls. Our family does feel complete. It does. Like it can I think I think there's such thing as your family feeling complete and then but still like expanding your family if that makes okay. sense. God only had in our plans for us to have Rye. Mm -hmm. We just had one child. I don't think I would ever be like living our life and be like, I feel like we're missing something. I feel like we, I wish, you know, this or that, but yeah. I have heard that you'll never regret having more kids, but there's no one that has like five kids and they're like, I wish I would have just had three. Right. Especially once you meet your kids and you love them so much, obviously. Yeah. So you're not, you don't feel like we're complete. I used to, I used to think that, but now. So how many more do you want? A basketball team? Just one. No, I don't want a basketball team. Somebody commented that. Oh, my real. Give me a basketball team. No, we can get a starting lineup. What's a basketball team? A team is probably like 12 to like... 12 kids? That's what I'm saying. That's like a maybe a starting five. Mm -hmm. I run a point and then... Who's run a point? A point guard. And then I'm going to have... What will I do? You have, Actually, I got to run the five. And then if I ever get a son... Actually, I'm going to have my son run a point. I have my son run a point. Rye gonna run the two ball, and then Rye's so small. I'm gonna have Starly. Starly gonna be my small four. Starly gonna be that KD, and then you can run a four. Okay, I don't know what that means, but let's. And then I, I run a five. Is it possible to have a successful relationship when the other person has a job and the other one doesn't, or like when one person has a job and the other doesn't? When Savannah was, um, when we were dating, and she was like touring and like was always booked and blessed. What they say, mm -hmm. booked and blizz blizzy. It's just booked and blessed. I think. Booked and blessed. Um, then I was was doing my freelance joints, and I I see your classes. We all see them, and I was doing freelance, so I didn't know when my next gig was coming or anything. I was lucky freelance too. Baby, you had a guaranteed tour either Christmas or summer for like four to five years. It was tough because like I'm like, dang, I know she got some money. That's crazy. When did we did we ever discuss how much money we had when we were dating? I don't think so. Individually? No. I guess everyone's different, but I kind of feel like it's not really like your business. Like at the end of the day, you're just dating. Yeah, for sure. So like, well, I I'm was not dating about to ask though. you how much money you have in your bank account. Did you? Could you tell that I was like good, or I did mean, you think you I was always, a little poor little dude? No, I mean you always paid for everything for me. I did, but then it got to we got comfortable, and then we started splitting stuff. So we started splitting. I was like, girl, that bank account don't look good at all. No, I think well, and then if like skipping ahead to marriage, it definitely works. I don't think that a relationship can just not work. Say one person has a job, one doesn't. That's how a lot of marriages and families are. Definitely. To this day, you know, like maybe the mom goes to work or the dad yeah. goes to work and then the other parent stays at home. That's like so, so typical. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's great. And I think that honestly being a stay at home mom or a stay at home dad is a job in itself. Yes, you're not 100%. actually getting a paycheck. Mm -hmm. But if you think about for one, just like the amount of work it is, the amount of money you would spend on daycare or, you know, yeah, daycare, I guess yeah. when they're little, right. it's crazy. Yeah, I, I always think it's so crazy. Like a full-time stay-at-home parent is such a large job and responsibility. So like, I wouldn't even say like, okay, the husband works, the wife is just a stay-at-home mom. Like it's not yeah. just. She's working. She's working too. She's just She's not provided. getting a check. Yeah, exactly. But that's honestly, obviously like you need like financial mm -hmm. peace to be mm -hmm. able to function and you know, like provide food right. and things like that, like practical things for your family. But yeah. if it wasn't for the parents staying at home with the children, what would you do? Exactly. You know, like yeah. that's a really, really important job. So shout out to all the stay-at-home parents. Shout out. And then I will say, if you're like dealing with feeling bad that you're not bringing money or you're just kind of down that someone else is making money in the relationship, find a hobby. Mm -hmm. Like do something that you're just super passionate about. And that could just be just being a stay-at-home parent. Find something that you're passionate about and uh, that'll Get be that. Get into it. While you're looking for that though, I forgot, let me put y'all back on 
Water drop. Feel y'all already hip to it. What kind is it? This is grapefruit. I like the ones that have the little bit of energy in them. Yes. Because it's like the perfect amount of like a natural caffeine situation. Yeah. Not like a full energy drink mm -hmm. or something. If you all don't know about water drop, essentially they come in like these little packets and they, there's like a cube that you put in there. It dissolves. They have like fizzy ones. I think you can put it in sparkling water and then it was sparkling. Oh, okay. They have ones with electrolytes, so they have like ones for like post workout, I think, yep. that are good for that. It's a great alternative if you don't like drinking just normal water, which is still good for you. And then these bottles too. They're made out of glass. And y'all know Savannah always talking about my crunchy water, not using our plastic. By the way, zero sugar, and I think like five calories. Very good for you. Get into it. Favorite? <laughs> oh wait, I gotta tell them there's a code. Oh. There's a code. And you guys can go check out Water Drop. Favorite places to shop for clothes for the girls? Ooh. You yeah. don't be shopping for them. I just be styling them. Yeah. Well, actually, no, you took ride shopping at Zara. We like Zara. I feel like Zara always has... Zara is nice because you can, like, actually go into a physical store, but mm -hmm. I feel like I like to find, like, little small shops on Instagram. I like... A couple small businesses I like. I like Purely Little. I think it's Seven Children's Apparel. Mm -hmm. There's this other brand, Ziggy Zaza, I think it's called. Mm. And I think it's like Australian, maybe. They have really cute stuff. Nudes, kids. Oh, yeah, nudes. So it's Tones. Their tones. stuff is super cute. Um, Set Active has really cute a uh, kids line now. Nice. Uh, but then I also like just like some basics, like Old Navy, Gap, H&M. Those are all good, cute like essential places next trip we got a few trips this week actually we are going to alabama alabama and we're going to georgia it's for the podcast but then also we're going to go hang out with some friends it's going to be fun. and then we're supposed to be going to la in, in a couple months yeah, we're going to go to la savannah has a big trip planned it's a surprise it's a big trip but we're going to be there for a long time i think one of my teeth is moved last night teeth teeth moved like you know my bite i've been using my teeth. yeah like Nice. My tooth feels like it could be loose. It's usually, that's not a good thing at this age. Yeah. But I don't know what happened. Besides by uh, this trip, I'm about to take to Chipotle. That is the only trip that uh those trips that we have planned. Oh wait, we're going somewhere in May. We're going to Florida. We are traveling. We outside. You guys, when we moved to the Pacific Northwest, yes. it's a bit gloomy over on this side of the country. Mm -hmm. And I said I would not be stuck in the gloomy weather. So I planned a trip. I wasn't joking. I planned a trip somewhere warm every month. Every month. Starting from January, literally until May. I feel like we, if you live here, you have to plan trips because honestly, you're going to get depressed i think it helped us to go from not living in la to coming straight here because we went to michigan first yeah. well we were in dallas for a little bit but being in michigan they have all four seasons and so we got a glimpse of what it's like to not like wake up and it be sunny every single day yeah so i think if we would have moved from la straight to here i think it would have hit me a little harder i think i was a little bit more prepared because okay. i'm used to the gray days in michigan yeah. the really cold weather and i feel like we're still on a high right now because we have so much help life just feels different speaking of what's your favorite spot in your new city <laughs> <laughs> Low key, I got a spot called Mulberry mm -hmm. Smoothies and I got like acai bowls. I ain't tried the acai bowls yet, but I need to get on acai. But yeah. that is my spazat. Um, and then there's a spot called Salt and Straw Ice Cream. Where's your spot? We went to this place. It's called... Wait, I'm so called Where? Little Bros. No, that, I the love burger it. spot? It's on Alberta. They have really good <laughs> truffle fries. I feel cool saying Alberta. I think, my, I think the thing I'm most like excited about was moving here knowing already yeah the workout coffee spots. shops oh the coffee shops dutch bros black and rock. black rock coffee shops are just such a thing <sighs> two three bless you savannah i've dated such losers i don't know how i have a good relationship with god but i'm a little discouraged Ooh. you could answer that you can answer that <laughs> <laughs> that a girl or boy she's dated losers we could both answer that being content with being single would really help with that because if you're like really I don't know her specific situation like if you're really wanting a relationship so you're like seeking out yeah. and then you just kind of end up with guys that are like eh, because you feel like you just are longing for like to have that person and to have a relationship so you're maybe like settling right. or just yeah just settling and not not being with someone that you know is treating you the way yeah. you deserve to be treated. So I think just being content with being single and not necessarily seeking out for a relationship. For sure. But I also can just say that I can't even imagine what it would be like to date like in this day and age and I know like what marriage meant to me and how much like you know I wanted to get married and have a family so I don't think that's wrong to not want that 
or I don't think it's wrong to want that mm-hmm. and to like dream about that and even to take actions the, the to, initiative to do that yeah. you know because like you're not just gonna yes you can like pray and ask God to bring you your husband and you know things will but you can't just be like sitting back oh definitely you gotta and just wait yeah. like if you need to pursue like you, you know dating if you have places that you could meet people mm-hmm. that are your age church mm-hmm. whatever still like put in the effort because I think that that's important too because I feel like a lot of the time people are like oh just be content with being single and just like don't seek your spouse but sometimes it's really not that easy because you do need to put in like some sort of effort for sure and then pertaining to like the losers find dudes that for one you said they have a relationship with god they need to have a strong relationship with god um i would say a strong uh relationship with their family uh how does he treat his parents his mom if he has siblings his friends like what does his friend group look like how do people speak about him and then i'll say this if you are dating dudes that are like that newsflash even these church boys are losers we're lame low-key some of the lamest dudes be at church i said it they'd be the ones especially me i used to be the one yeah just because you're in church doesn't mean that you're like an actual godly man no so yeah don't think that oh i'm gonna go to church and find my husband and they're gonna be perfect they're gonna be this and that for one everyone has flaws so like some you know no one's perfect i'm not saying like you shouldn't look out of church for your husband your husband probably is in church but i'm just saying they could also be out of church and you could also bring them to the lord so you just never know make sure they're just equally yoked did y'all do anything special to encourage stars quick milestones stars don't call my daughter star i'm joking you can call her star we just don't call her star i know i kind of like i think it's actually cute when other people call her star but we just really don't call her we star we never called her star okay so here's the update i think it's on camera at one month to two months starly was trying to roll over she was rolling over let's start with her being three days old and she's like holding her head up literally so from the jump Shorty has been on a different wave. I really didn't recognize it or kind of remember what Ride did, so I had nothing to... Oh, I did. Compa- oh, really? Well, yeah. now I do, because she's six months. Well, she's seven months, but at six months, she was crawling. And now she's seven months, and she's doing what? She stands. Yeah, pulls stands, up, pulls, still tr- crawls, tries sits. to transfer from one thing to another. And what do we do? No, I was going to say, we didn't do... It. I don't think we did anything special to encourage it. And I've, I've gotten, like, a lot of DMs, and we get some comments, like, on our TikToks if we show Starly, like, wave or like oh, yeah, even, she's waving, yeah. even that is super I think that's super advanced for her age I wouldn't say that that's normal I feel like the normal like waving age is like nine to ten months or something like yeah. that mm-hmm. so she is like definitely ahead but even still with that like it, it could be different it's different for yeah, each every, baby yeah, yeah. every baby is different so we didn't do anything special to it I mean of course we'll wave at her and talk to her and say hi but like just because you do that doesn't mean that your baby's gonna do that and doesn't mean that they even should be doing that I feel like there's no set age like oh your baby needs to do this by this age right. every baby crawls at a different age walks at a different age and just because you see like what our baby is doing or anyone else's baby mm-hmm. i always like feel so sad when parents are like oh like i wish you know my baby's not doing that like what can i do to make them do that you know mm-hmm. and of course like there's things you can encourage like for example starting tummy time early like stuff like that which i'm sure you guys already know that's mm-hmm. so good for their development and stuff don't let these other moms or dads guilt you either send them my way <laughs> they're gonna make you feel bad about it send them this clip okay Baby, you're like really cringing me right now. Baby, stop. Are you gonna go on this line? Baby, stop. What's changed? (laughs) Because I do this all the time. Let's we can stop the video. Your skin looks nice, baby. You have starly earrings and Ryla love necklace. Yeah, it's on purpose. But don't talk about my fashion because you don't like my condom beanie. My husband and I are expecting our first baby. We're so nervous. Any advice for noobs? This probably isn't what you want to hear. Every piece of advice you get, take it with a grain of salt. Because or like, just throw it out the window. Well, no, but because what we were just saying is every baby is so different. So for me, what was really toxic for me being postpartum was the constant comparing. I'm reading everything possible I can about sleep. I'm reading this. I'm reading that. I'm reading all the things. Yeah. Literally just on Google, on Instagram, on social media, whatever. And then I'm like, okay, well, this baby is the same age as my baby. And they're sleeping through the night and blah, 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 all this stuff. I will say I got some good advice before having Rye that I really did implement. Mm. And it helped me. But then other things I'm just, I feel like that almost made me more stressed in a way yeah i mean the thing is your baby's different but also you're different mm-hmm. how you react to things is is different your lifestyle can be different than other people i don't know i just love seeing and i genuinely mean this like first-time parents figuring out their own way or they're figuring out something that we've obviously went through or something for the first time they're learning they're doing their thing and they're seeing what works for them see what works for you and trust that as their parent you really do know what's best for them 
and trust me i i remember feeling like i literally don't know what to do like something as simple as when we first had rye i was nervous to change her diaper because i thought i was gonna hurt her because she was like so small hmm. so something that simple but when you're in those moments you just have to remember your motherly instincts you really do know you're doing this for the first time yeah and give yourself the grace also give yourself yourself the grace that you're doing this for the first time and then also the baby too right because I, they're I learning that, yeah. everything for the first time so it's like yes as much as it can be easy to get frustrated like why aren't they sleeping why aren't they doing this or that they literally just came into this earth and yeah. they're learning all the things too they're learning yeah. you they're creating that connection with you especially with the dad get into it you preaching for real for real Ah, uh, yeah, that was very cringy. Why? <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys find the most challenging in this season of life? <laughs> I would say we're just kind of tapping into like uh, just Ryla's personality. She's oh, two yeah. mm -hmm. and learning how to navigate that because that's all new for us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's like can be challenging about parent parenting, but also really beautiful because each stage is so different and yeah. you have to learn something new like it's always going to keep you on your toes yeah she's keeping us on our toes for sure yeah but it's also so fun at the same time 100 percent. i would also say i am like learning just to accept where i am mentally with my just in my life like stop one comparing but two just stop always being in a hurry or anxious mm -hmm. to do something because that's like, this, good. this is just where we are this yeah, is it sometimes i feel like imagine this one day and that's totally okay to like imagine the future and mm -hmm. think about the future like oh when our girls are five yeah, and six yeah, yeah. our life will be so different and it may be easier in certain aspects that's where i've been but yeah. we'll mourn this time and we will always think about like oh my gosh remember when they were just babies so yeah. i'm really trying to just stay present with that and know that this is our current season yeah and sometimes that can be challenging so i feel Definitely. like just kind of just, just being accept present. it yeah, yeah just be present that's, that's just that do you guys think your content has shifted showing the kids more thoughts about it uh Oh, sh shifted to showing the kids. Oh, more. Sh to showing the kids more. No, but I will say our daughters are getting older, so it might seem like you just see them more. But I will say this. Actually, I will say no flat across the board compared to a family channel or like someone else on social media who is sh who is like actually showing their kids. Yeah. And their content is centered around their kids. So compared to that, no, I don't think we are. We've always said this and our content will always remain us. Yeah, for sure. It's never centered around them every like brand that we work with is us yeah for sure. every just every like tiktok idea youtube whatever like everything you're create creative wheel mm -hmm. it, it's it's us and Definitely. then maybe the girls will be there because it's a vlog for or sure. it's this or that but compared to what it, it actually means to be putting the camera in front of your kid's face nowadays on social media Absolutely not. I think yeah. we are like minuscule version of showing our kids. What are you doing differently with Startly? <laughs> Everything. She's just an independent queen. She's an independent queen, and it's because she's the second child. And mm -hmm. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't really listen to when people say, "Oh, the second child, they're just going to learn." He's like, you know, mm -hmm. we're much more laid back with her than we were with Rai. Mm -hmm. Um, but then also still really implementing some of the things that we did implement that we knew really worked well with Rai. Like we're. We keep them both on a, like a pretty flexible but a schedule yeah. like they thrive with going to bed at a certain time and having their naps and all of that and i really like that but i think we have a healthy balance of flexibility yeah. and schedule you have no but, choice because that's they second child and a toddler yeah she's a starly so like flexible i mean she'll literally do whatever and even when especially when she was a newborn she's sleeping so much i mean we we're out like all day right. every day and she would just sleep on the go yeah what's something like else we're doing differently we don't use like blackout curtains and stuff with her which I think is mm -hmm. kind of nice because or even like a sound machine on the go we used to always have a sound machine in this car yeah and now it's just falsely really yeah. and we aren't stressing about this girl taking cat nap yeah. we used to Ryella used to take like 30 minute naps 40 minute naps and we tried to rock her back to sleep yes but now sissy butts unless like we know she needs to take a nap she's like super tired still we can tell we just let her just, take just her wake up and nap. let's just go and i feel like if you are in the season where you feel like all you do all day is put your baby to sleep feed your baby that is kind of what it feels like in the beginning and yeah. i think that's totally normal but i say just roll the punches like roll just them. let them let them sleep how they want to sleep and let them wake up and it'll all work out how do you feel like josh compliments you and does he make you feel loved and appreciated 
Hmm. I do feel like we compliment each other really well. I feel like Josh specifically compliments me. I'm more introverted, I guess. Hmm. So in like social settings, we really compliment each other well because Josh is very charismatic, outgoing. Would talk to anyone in a room, a stranger, comfortably. I'm just not really as much like that. So I feel like when we're together, we make a good team. And yeah. you know that about me. Yeah. So little things like that, like learning about your spouse, kind of like where they're not necessarily weak, but just where you're maybe stronger in that area. Mm -hmm. Just like know that about them and have their back. I feel like we compliment each other in every area. Some people say like that they're totally opposite from their spouse. And I don't think we're totally opposite. Whatever your differences are, even if you feel like everything about you and your spouse are different, that's what's like so cool about it is because when you come together, it just works. Like yep. it just fits yep. and it all kind of flows together. You make it work. Oh, and yes, you do make me feel loved and appreciated. Last question. Last question. Carpool karaoke. We need one. Ah! Ain't it fun? Hey, come on. Is it? Ain't it good? Yeah, oh, I love it. It's too much. It's, huh? it's too much. What happened? <laughs> okay. Hey, are y'all thinking? The ones and twos, talking like what you do. Baby, are you keeping your beanie like that? How else is it supposed to go? Now I look like I'm a little white boy. Do you like that beanie like that? Yeah, I do. Okay, it's not on your head. All right, as long as you like it. Mm -hmm. Baby, I can't take you serious with it. Who knows when if we'll ever change our mind? But you guys will always see our baby girls. No, we don't know. You said always. Yeah, I mean for now. <laughs> yeah, for now. Yeah. Because <laughs> you go, I don't know when we'll change it, and then you see, you guys will always. Yeah, they'll always see it for now. <laughs>